Over the next month, we are putting a focus on the state of education in West Texas. We're calling it Project Education. Tonight, we're taking a closer look at Midland ISD. By the end of this month, Crockett Elementary as we know it will be no more. The school will be closing. All staff and teachers will be reassigned. It's all because the campus failed to meet state standards six years in a row. We found that Crockett Elementary wasn't the only one that was a struggling campus. CBS 7's Tatum Gwynn is taking a look at what the district is doing to prevent it from happening again. Tatum? It's no secret the state of our schools are not where the district leaders want them to be. That was a big part of closing Crockett. Now moving forward, the district is taking proactive steps to ensure this does not happen again. Every standard that's up here is an essential standard. If you want an idea of how exactly Milam Elementary is working to turn around their campus, just take a look at this room. What do we do with them? How do we track them? Every single piece of curriculum students must know are written out floor to ceiling, divided by grade and subject. How do you think of this? This is very detailed. Very detailed. Um, it just, it's just evolved. <laughs> it seems like a lot, and it is, but there is a purpose. We, as a campus, we identified what is going to be crucial for us to get out of IR as fast as we can. Principal Ileana Bermia and her team have been working with a sense of urgency to remove the improvement required label from their campus. Milam is one of five campuses district wide that have been deemed improvement required for more than two years. More than that, Milam and South have lived with a label for four years. The only other campus with more, Crockett. Challenges that we face at any improvement required campus is the gaps in learnings for kids, what they come into school knowing. To help meet those needs, the district has assigned each IR campus a special staff member. Some used as um, intervention specialists to work with kids, some used as an instructional coach to work with teachers. Milam has two intervention specialists. They spend their time working one-on-one -on -one with students who need help in a certain subject. One focuses on K through second. The other works with third through sixth graders. Though we found Milam's turnaround plan goes deeper than working with a specialist. What exactly is the state of Texas asking the student to be able to do with the skill? And how are we going to be able to ensure that our students are mastering those skills? All teachers meet weekly to collaborate their lesson plans. They have also been tracking each and every student for the past two years and intervening sooner in problem cases. That's a game changer. We don't want to wait to the end of a unit to be able to identify if the student was successful or not with that standard. So tracking the progress of the students and, and tracking and monitoring um, their status really allows us to see a glimpse of the student as an overall. And it looks like all of this work is paying off. Here's a look at how the state graded Milam two years ago before the turnaround plan was implemented. Missing three out of the four indexes, the state grades by several points. Now look at the 2016 report card, the first year with the turnaround plan in place. Students made an eight-point gain in student achievement and improved by four points in closing performance gaps. This year's state report card is not out yet, but we do have a look at early star scores. Fifth graders made a 12-point gain in reading and a nine-point gain in math. While we still are improvement required, we see a lot of progress and that is one of the things that we can really focus on when we have those discussions with the parents. Um, our students are closing gaps, our students are making progress. While it's easy to wonder how Midland ISD got in this situation to begin with, Dr. Kale says that's not the focus. Their attention now is on the future and because of the work being done on campuses like Milam, she says the future looks bright. Something else we found going through the data of the IR campuses that have been IR for more than one year, more than 78% of the students on these campuses are economically disadvantaged and nearly 32% are considered English language learners. The state contributes both of those as factors behind a failing school. The district says that's why they are sending more resources and support to those campuses. Reporting in the studio, I'm Tatum Gwynn, CBS 7 News.